Hello, everybody. In this tutorial, we're going to use Abacus to simulate transient heat conduction in a bar. So we previously did steady state heat conduction in a bar, and then in this case, we're going to do transient uh, heat conduction in a bar. Click here. Let me go across my windows. So I have Abacus open here. I've just opened Abacus. Um, so previously, I created this steady state. A hot bar, so you'll see it in recent files, but you can click on open database if you can't see it there and go find where you save it. So it's a CAE file. So a CAE file is like this model database. So I'm going to open the, that one. And I'm going to check the working directory set because it lost the default back to, uh, to the original default um, position. So I'm going to reset it to the correct directory. So users, oopsie, fuck this, have a guess models. Um, and I'll save it there. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is first I'm going to just make a copy of the steady state hotbar. So I'm going to copy this entire model and I'm going to call it um, transient hotbar. Transient hotbar. Okay, so I have two models for exactly the same. I just renamed them. So you can see there's a little black line under which one we're looking at. So if I double click on steady state, it like changes the focus back to that one. Double click on transient, it gives some settings, but I'll disclose that. So transient hotbar. So the part is going to look the same. We're just going to change it to a transient analysis. But when we have a transient analysis, the governing conservation of energy equation um, has a, a transient term in it. So it's now at each node or regions of our elements around each node. Uh, the sum of all the heat fluxes going in and out, which is the conductivity by the gradient of temperature. So we need conductivity. Instead of equal, equal to zero, as in steady state, it's now equal to um, the rate of change of internal energy. So the rate of change of internal energy or enthalpy energy here um, is the density by the specific heat by the, uh, the time derivative of temperature. So we need two extra properties. We need density and we need specific heat. So let's go under materials and double click on steel. So we only have time to give you. So let's add density, which is under general. So for steel, it's 8,000 um, kilograms per meter cubed. And then thermal, we will have a specific heat. And uh, for steel, uh, it's 500. I can't remember the specific uh, SI units. Um, so that's our property set. Uh, if we go down through here, our assembly with our instance is still the same. Um, but this analysis step, if you remember, we set at the steady state. So if you double click on step one, it's, it's a heat transfer step, uh, but it's going to be a transient one, not a default, not a steady state one. Um, so the time period now actually stands for something. So this is one second. So if we have a 10 meter bar of steel and we're going to make it a little bit warm on one end, it's going to take a long time for it to reach steady state or for it to warm up. So actually for such a large piece of steel, uh, we're going to use about 1 million seconds here. Uh, incrementation, we can either tell Abacus to just um, go in steps, or it calls them increments of a particular size. So if we were wanting to solve the temperature at 1 million seconds, well, in a transient problem, we probably want to solve it at a number of times before that in a time margin manner. So maybe solve at 1,000 seconds, 2,000 seconds, 3,000 seconds, 4,000, et cetera. And then we maybe will store results at all those times. So we can either set the particular time instance. So we can set it to 1 million seconds. It will just be one step to the end. Or we could say half that or one tenth of that. But Abacus has a, an automatic time stepping method. So if you want to use the automatic time stepping, you tell it the max temperature change per time increment, and then Abacus will figure out what that time increment shot size should be. So if we set that to one degree, it will only let it change one degree per time increment or time step. So then it will keep producing the time step to make sure that's the case. And the max number of increments, that's just a fail safe check that if you, you uh, that it'll just kill the model if it gets to 100 time steps. So for example, if it starts taking like 0 0.01 of a second, it'll take a very long time to get one to one million seconds. So this is just a, a, a backup way that you can kill it if it runs for too long. So I'll just set the, that to 1,000, that should be more than enough. And um, if it goes longer than that, it will kill it. Click OK. And uh, now the last thing before running it is to change the boundary conditions. So previously we had a fixed temperature. If I just changed to the load uh, module, but a fixed temperature here on the left, and we had a heat flux on the right. So I'm going to delete the temperature on the left. So right click and delete. 
you can suppress it if you just want to temporarily disable it. Disable it. So if I suppress it, it turns it off and then I can resume it later. But in this case, I know I definitely don't want it, so I'm just going to delete it. And then the heat flux on the right, I'm also going to delete as well. So in this case, I'm going to have a zero heat flux boundary condition on the top, left, and bottom. So I could go load surface heat flux instead of zero, but by default, Abacus will assume that for heat analysis, if you don't specify boundary conditions, then it's a zero heat flux boundary condition. So there's always a boundary condition, even if you don't specify one in Abacus, there are, Abacus will assume one for you because you have to have a boundary condition. So on the right-hand side, we're going to have a, a, a convective boundary condition. So we're, it's like a simplified um, a heat boundary condition for assuming that the right boundary is submerged in a, in a fluid, like a liquid or a gas of a certain temperature. So if you imagine we have a, let's imagine we have a, a 100 degree fluid, like water or air over here, and, and that will cause a heat flux, which is proportional to the difference in temperature of the right side of the bar and this heat and uh, this uh, fluid. So that's called a convective boundary condition or a Newton's law of cooling boundary condition or Abacus calls it a film boundary condition. So to do that, it's, uh, it's not under loads and BCs, even though it is a boundary condition, it comes under interactions because it's a little bit more uh, complicated. So if I just double click on interactions, change the module, I could call it, I uh, give it a name, but int one is fine. And then we're gonna look for a surface film condition. Click continue, and then it's going to say, well, where are we going to apply this? So if I click on surfaces here, we should have already created one called right. So if I click highlight selection here, right, you'll see it gets highlighted over here when I click that. And so we already created a surface there, so we don't have to click it again, we can just select its name. Click continue. So the film coefficient, this governs the, um, the rate at which uh, heat uh, transfer is lost. So this is like the uh, heat transfer coefficient. Um, so if you imagine if you have a liquid that's been forced convection, like it's been blown by a fan at it, it will have a much higher uh, coefficient than if it was just natural convection. Um, and then the sink temperature just represents the temperature of the, the bulk fluid away from the surface. So we're going to have a 100 degree uh, fluid. So um, there are only conditions. Um, we could set an initial condition, but Abacus will assume that it's all zero, um, so that's fine. So it's going to assume all our bar is zero degrees to begin with, and then it's immersed in a 100 degree fluid on the right-hand side, so should, we should expect the bar to heat up from the right-hand side, and it's perfectly insulated everywhere else. Um, okay, so we are good to go. It's probably a good time to save it now, so to save our database. Um, we will go down to jobs. We're going to make a new job, double-click on jobs. I'm going to call this transient hot bar. So you can see I'm giving the jobs the same name as the models, but you could have transient hot bar one, two, three, uh, where you have slight differences each time you run them. So I click uh, continue and accept the defaults. And let's submit that now. Oh, history step. Actually, in this case, we're going to create a history step. So I want to store the temperature at the right bar versus time. So let's let's add add that as a history input request. So to do that, we first need a, uh, the right boundary to be uh, a set. So if we go back to the parts, open up your hot bar, you'll see there is already a set because if you remember, we created a set called all when we were assigning the material properties. But if I just double click on sets, and I'm going to call it right and geometry continue and it says select part of your geometry so it could be a point an edge or edges it could be the entire geometry so I'll just click the right hand side you can see it's red done and that's it we have a, a set called right and a set called all i go to history output request double click and um, you can give it any name just accept the defaults so this isn't going to be information for the entire model, but you can see we could store information uh, for the entire model. Let me just make this bigger. Um, but instead we're going to do a history output based on a set, and then we're going to pick uh, right. So hot bar one right is the set. And I'm going to store the temperature, nodal temperatures, NT, on the hot on the right hand side. Um, yep, very good. So I click OK, now I'll save it again, go back to our transient hot power, right click, go submit. There's no warning this time. So this model will take a little bit longer to run because we're running multiple time steps, but it's still a pretty um, 
create model to run. So I can see submitted. So if I right click on the model while it's running and go to monitor, um, you can also get that from up the top here as well, job and, and monitor. And where did it go? Job monitor. And you'll see some information that it prints out about the, the model. So I'm just going to open this to make it easier to see. So there's a few tabs. There's the log errors, warning outputs, dead file, message file, and status file. So these are all files that actually get create, created in the working directory. So the log will just say things like when was the job submitted, when it started, when it completed, and things like that. So you can see it's actually done now. Errors, if it gives an error and, and stops, it'll give a message here. So you can look up and try to understand what this error is. Um, if you don't, maybe it's explained in the notes or otherwise uh, check on, online. Uh, warnings. Um, so um, it's important to check what the warnings are and, and, and check if they will are um, if uh, it's important to understand what they are. So in this case, we're, we're going to ignore this one, which is fine. It has this output thing. So this is when it's storing the colored pictures. So we can we didn't change that the default setting, and that's in the field output. And we could change it here. A data file, message file. Um, data file and message file are just um, some more information that you typically don't have to look at. Um, and the state status file is just showing exactly what's in this table up here. So if we look at this table and um, what's it showing, well, it's saying step one. We've only, we're only doing one analysis step, so that'll always say one. Um, and you'll see it does multiple increments. So what it does, it says goes increment one, it tries an increment size of one million seconds, and then a U means it's unsuccessful. So we said it can only change one degree per increment. So Abacus tried it, found it to change the temperature was too great. So then it reduces the time step, tries it again, it was still too big, it was unsuccessful again, tries it again, unsuccessful. And then on the fourth attempt, you can see it's successful with a time step of just under 2000 seconds. So then it's around 2000 seconds, you'll see that it uh, is happy to stay around that value and it's going through the different increment, increments. So then the total time you see is increasing. So this is the time increment, which, um, and then this is the, the total time here. So the step time and total time are the same here, same here if we do only one analysis step. So you can see it keeps increasing until it gets to 1 million seconds. So it took 89 time steps to get there. So if I just dismiss this, if you wanted to kill a job, you can just go right click and kill while it's running. Uh, you can mul run multiple jobs at the same time if you want as well. So if I go right click results, um, I have this uh, transient hotbar and um, uh, ODB file results file again. I click on this color picture. It's going to go to the gradient of temperature, but I want to look at uh, the temperature distribution itself, the nodal temperatures. So this is a transient problem. So these play buttons will come into come into play here. So I can just if I click on this time history animate button. It will play in time that the bar is heating up. So it's a hot fluid here, and you can see the temperature is diffusing across the bar. So it's heating up and it goes to the 47 degrees at the end here. So you can see it's looping here. And so if you click on this setting here, you can set it to play once instead of looping. By default, it loops. So you can press play here and pause it, go back a time step, forward time step. You can even click this and you can select the exact frame. So you can see we've 89 time steps and that are saved. So even though the results are calculated at 89 time steps, in this case, they're calculated and the results are written. So we can see the, the colored pictures at each of those 89 time steps. But if we have a large number of time steps, we maybe hundreds and hundreds, we maybe only want to store the results every 10 time steps because otherwise the ODB file gets very large. Great. So uh, if you remember, we stored the temperature on the right-hand side um, versus um, uh, versus time. So let's look at that. Where do we find that? So if you open out our transient hot bar ODB and you'll see this history output. So you'll see there's node temperature um, at node 11 and at node 22. So because I selected this edge here, it actually has a node here and a node there. So it actually stored the temperature here versus time and the temperature here versus time. Um, but because this is kind of a 1D problem, um, they're both the same. So if I double click on one of those, it'll actually plot temperature versus time. So you can see that it, and the temperature changes quickly at the start because there's a big difference between the 100 degree fluid temperature and the bar. And um, but then that rate at which the temperature is increasing starts to slow down as the bar approaches the temperature of the fluid. So if I uh, look at both of these, they're basically the same, or they are the same. 
So if uh, I want to just save this down here, so I'm just going to go to temp versus time, and I'll just as is. So then that will appear in our x, y plots here. So I can right click and edit. And like before, I can click in the first box, scroll down, shift click in the bottom, go copy, and I can paste that into Excel if I wanted to plot it against something. Um, next thing we want to plot along the bar like we did for steady state. So I'm going to make a path again. So the paths aren't saved in the CAE. I have to make them again. So path points. So I'm going 0, 0 0.5, 0. And then the right hand side is 10, 0 0.50. Click OK. That looks fine. Maybe just double click on it again, check it looks OK. Yep. So I'm going to go XY data and path to grade my XY plot. And path one is fine. I make sure to click include intersections so you can see if we don't, then it's only going to plot a value with this element. This element, see they're red. But if I click include intersections, you can see um, it's including them there. Uh, instead of including intersections, you can also do uniform spacing. So if you have different sized elements, um, you can just uniformly sample along the path. So if I just go plot, it shows the temperature to the left of the bar, which has to be, um, well, actually it doesn't have to be zero. We haven't fixed that zero in this case. Um, and it's, it starts at zero yeah, and then it heats up towards the right hand side of the bar. Uh, but just one thing to note here is um, there, since there are, this is a transient problem, uh, we could plot along the bar at different times and it'll be different. So if I set it closer to the start time and, and plot, you'll see that it's mostly zero along the bar and then when it gets near the end, it's starting to heat up. So if I then maybe go to halfway through and I plot again, you can see now it's heating up more and more. And then if I approach uh, the end time, one million seconds, Best plot, you can see it's getting um, heating up more and more. So, we've already, um, so in this case, um, what would the steady state temperature distribution be? Um, well, actually, since we haven't fixed the left temperature, we've all we just insulated it around, heat can't get out. The steady state temperature will, um, will be 100 degrees because the whole bar will just heat up to the, the fluid temperature. That's fine. Um, this is plotting at the end time. I can just say we go temp along the bar. Um, and then I have my temp long bar, and then I have temp versus time. If you have one plot, you can click on another plot and go add to plot, and it'll put the both on the same plot. In this case, one is temperature versus time, and one's temperature versus distance, so it, it has to use two different axes. So it doesn't really help that much putting them on the same one, but you can just see how it works. Great, and that is the end of this tutorial.